welcome everybody. Uh, this is George Headley, as you know, and uh, here to uh, get started on our little work workshop today, Biz Booster Workshop, uh, Fast Track Your Business, How to Move to the Next Level. So most of you know me, uh, I've been a general contractor for 35, 40 years, lost track since I was uh, 23 or four, and uh, built my company up. And uh, the last 10 years, I've been doing almost exclusively uh, business coaching and, and consulting to help contractors, uh, you know, move to the next level and, 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 and build a better business. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, improving your company. What can you do? And I'm, I always like to start with, you know, a little bit about me. You know, I started my company when I was 20, 27 and, and I didn't really have a great, uh, a great, training program. I mean, I was an engineer and then I started my company and here you go. And so I learned everything on the job uh, with an engineering background and built a nice company. And I realized when you try to do everything yourself, you just don't grow like you should. And so uh, over time, I've learned to implement systems and strategies and uh, those kinds of things to help companies, including my own, get to the next level. I stopped building for other people uh, in uh, around 10 years ago. I stopped my uh, construction business and just continued on. So I'm a full-time business coach, well, 90% of the time. I have some fun in golf and I uh, have some real estate I own, but that's my main business is helping contractors get to the next level. And so uh, a few years ago, I wrote a book. You can get it on Amazon if you're interested. Just go on amazon.com, type in my name and it pops right up and they'll ship it to you free and do the and in, in going through it. And if you're interested in purchasing it, uh, it comes with a uh, Excel template of my blueprint, which I'll share today. But uh, you gotta you gotta send me a note to send it to you after you get the book. So so over the years, the last ten to twenty years, I've been speaking at conferences. Uh, I've been at World of Concrete twenty four times and uh, learned a lot from my clients and who I'm helping. And so what I've done is over the years, I've created uh, kind of a steps to success, what works, what I call the blueprint for success, business success blueprint, biz builder blueprint. And that's what I've been working on, improving and perfecting and getting better and better. So today uh, uh, I offer coaching sessions. And of course I have peer groups, which I know some of you are in my peer groups, my mastermind peer groups. And of course um, I've got an online school but I'm not here to sell that. I'm here to help you today. So how do we get to the next level? What's it going to take to, to jump ahead? What, what do you have to do to get to the next level? That's the key. So I always like to start by reminding you, I do have a hand, handout. And uh, if you're interested, um, just send me an email when we're done. And so we're going to start on page two. And if you don't have one, that's fine. So the first question is, why are we here? Why do we attend? And um, I, I, I've learned from my clients, the ones that are successful, that's where you learn. You try to do it yourself, and you, you just can't figure it out. It takes some help. It takes peer groups. It takes working with other people, watching other people, listening to other people, and uh, maybe coaching or consulting, whatever you, whatever you think you need. That's what it takes. And what I realize is best in contractors pretty much all do the same things. They make the same kinds of decisions. They invest in their company. They invest in people. They invest in training. And they install systems. And they delegate and they let go. And they don't try to do everything themselves. I've never had a client invest in a better employee, a manager, a senior manager, and say, man, that's expensive. And I wish I'd never done that. They always say, gosh, that was the best thing I've ever done. My business has grown off the, uh, you know, through the roof. And I'm going to continue to do that. Invest, you're going to get a return. Hope things get better, you're not going to get a return. And so I like to watch uh, contractors, and I like to watch business owners, and I like to watch the great coaches that I think are great coaches. I know some of you don't like some of the coaches I like, like Pete Carroll. I love the guy. He's uh, awesome, but I love watching him. <clears throat> he never gets on the field. He's got his head coach right behind him, make a call on all the plays. And, and Pete Carroll is a motivational, inspirational, visionary leader. He doesn't do the work. He doesn't do bids or estimates. He meets with his coaches, and they create a vision and a playbook 
to win games. Now, I know they've had a few tough years, but, you know, they've had a lot. He's had a lot of good years with his strategy and how he runs his runs his business. And then you've got the retired uh, Bruce Aarons from Seattle, uh, excuse me, from Tampa. You know, and he had Brady, which is amazing. And if you think about it, Tampa had the huevos to invest in a super highly expensive player. They, they, they took a risk, and they hired the best, and they got the best. Some other teams are too cheap, and some companies I work with are too cheap to hire good people, and they continue to struggle because they can't do it all themselves. And so what we need is a, is a plan for success. What's your plan for success? Do you have a written business plan with a five-year vision and an org chart and a chain of command and job descriptions and all the things we need to have? to build a winning team. So I want you to think of yourself as a head coach. You're a head coach and you've got to uh, do what a head coach does. You're the visionary leader, the motivator, the inspiration person. You gotta make sure you got systems in place. You gotta make sure you have the top talent. You gotta have, make sure you take care of your customers and get referrals and negotiated contracts with them. And then you can start building a great future where you can do what you want to do. So that's what I want you to think about. What bold new plays are you going to call to take your business to the to the next level? That's really what I want you to think about. So I used to dream about owning the perfect business. And I, I would say, you know, come in two or three days a week, uh, take a few days off, go fishing or golfing with my buddies, um, meet with my management team, maybe on Mondays, estimating Mondays, Maybe go out to a couple jobs, take a couple clients to lunch or golfing. Yeah, check on my investments and and enjoy the life, enjoy the great life. And then I realized this is a tough choice. It's hard to make it happen, really hard. And so, how do I build a business that's perfect for me? How do you build a business that works for you that you can really enjoy it? That's me on one of my development projects a few years ago that I uh, was a developer and contractor on. And how do you get how do you get what you want? How do you get your business to deliver what you want? And so what do you want? You want some freedom. There's me and my wife golfing in Ireland a few years ago. And there's some, you know, some cash coming out. What do you what's the purpose for your business? You know, what do you have to do to work a little, make a lot? What do you have to do to be on purpose, on target with the visions and values of your personal mission and vision? And what do you have to do to grow and profit? So that's really the question. So your business works for you rather than you working for your business. The purpose for your business is to deliver what the owners want. What do the owners want? What do we have to do to make it happen? And so uh, I get a lot of calls because I've, I've been in magazines and, and I've got a pretty nice presence at a lot of conferences and things over the last 20 plus years. And so I always say, what do you want? And I'll tell you what most people want. Most people who call me for help want the same things. They want they want a uh, they want to stop running in place. They want to get unstuck. They've been stuck doing the same thing for five, ten, twenty five years in a row, and they're getting nowhere. Their their wealth isn't increasing. Their profits aren't increasing. They're still struggling with bidding cheap and and uh, you know finding good help. But, you know, in the reality, they don't have a training plan or a hiring plan in place. They just hope it happens. They wait for the phone to ring. That's their marketing plan. So how do I get off the low price treadmill? How do I move to the next level? Well, I got to make some changes. I got to seek different customers and project types. How do, how do I stop doing all the work and being spread too thin? How do I, how do I eliminate my stress? How do I get organized and in control? These are the questions I continually get. I have trouble letting go, delegating. I have to make all the decisions for everybody. You know why? Because that's what you do. Just stop doing it and people will do their jobs. Don't do it for them. Uh, how do I get to the next level? Move to the next level. And I'm not saying you have to grow at 50% a year, but if you continually stay where you are, three crews, it drives me crazy. I've got a few clients. They do okay, okay, not great. And they got three crews. I mean, why don't you have four? Why don't you have five? Oh, it's so hard. Well, fine. Then quit complaining and enjoy the, the, the ugliness of your life. You know, it's your choice. Uh, so, so how do I build a highly profitable business? You know, my markups are too low. I'm not making enough money. I'm working too hard. 
Uh, I don't have a management team that's accountable to run the business. What do I do to make to make enough money to to profit to start an investment program, do some development? I'm in the construction business. I should know how to do investments. How do I get a life? How do I work less? And lastly, how do I become wealthy? The purpose for your business is to deliver you freedom and wealth. What are you doing about it? When's the last time you started a real estate project? Which I hopefully you are, and, and I'm hopefully I'm preaching to the choir, choir here. So most companies start, you know, there's an entrepreneur, there's a business owner, somebody breaks out and starts their company. And they've got the, uh, I call it the e-bug, the entrepreneur bug. And But most companies, most 70, 80% um, move to a level uh, over time, using the th first five years to a level of success. Some go a little higher, some go a little higher, but most plateau. Why do they plateau? And why do uh, only a few continue to grow? They have a vision. What's your vision? Only one out of 20 continue to grow uh, for forever. Most get stuck at 5 million, 10 million, 20 million, three crews, four crews, whatever it is. And they never get beyond that. Why? It's usually the owner's controlling personality that slows down growth. We don't, we stop wanting to take risk. Hiring somebody new is risk. Trying new customers is risk. Getting out of the low bid market is risk. Having to add people on your staff that can help you with negotiate and design build, pre-construction services, value engineering, that takes risk. Hire pros. Uh, so so what, what's holding you back? What holding you back? And the profit, as you stay stuck, continues to drop because your overhead keeps going up. And your sales stay flatter and lower than the growth of the cost of doing doing business. So, so you know, how's business? If I really ask you one on one, if you called me and said, "George, I need some help," let's talk. How's your business? Give me the truth, and then, it, boy, I get the, the guts spilled out right in front of me. I don't even know the guys, and they're she giving me their financials and whining about their people and telling me they bid it at fifteen percent gross profit and they're making eight and I can't figure out why, you know, what do I do? You don't understand, George. There's too many competitors in my market. I can't find any good help, George. You don't understand my market. Yes, I do. Everybody has the same problem. It's hard to make money in construction. There's too many cheap competitors. It's hard to uh, hire cheap, really good people. So we've all got the same problems unless we're willing to do what it takes to get to the next level. So what do I have to do to get to stop doing so much myself? There's there's a fun fun picture. What do I what to get off the treadmill to to keep letting the economy push me down the the river totally out of control? Uh, what do I have to do to stop like running in circles, putting out fires all day? And uh, you know, time management. Who? What time management? Whoever calls me next is top priority, right? Everything's on fire. And what do I have to do to build a best-in-class business? So when I say best-in-class, it's companies, contractors that have the top P&L, net profit, pre-tax in the industry. So I've got charts and studies that I share with clients to show them what the average contractor makes and what are you making. And what are the top ones doing that you're not doing? They always have a reason they're making more money. They track their job costs. They know their, their estimates are accurate. They never have profit fade. They're in a specialty market that has a high barrier to entry and restricts anybody from bidding who wants to get on the bid list. They, there's always a reason they're better and higher margins than most. What are you doing to increase your margins and get out of the same rut you're in if you're in a rut? Now, if you're in a high rut, fantastic. Keep pushing, right? But let's keep let's making it happen. You can't keep winning work by selling price. Uh, it's a repeat. You don't have many referrals. You have no marketing or sales. Uh, you're really unorganized. You're not holding people accountable to implement the systems uh, that you have that you know work. And so you know you get stuck in a truck. What I call the low bid construction company. You know you're stuck in a truck with no bucks and uh, no in the no profit zone. So why do, why do companies get stuck or why do they fail? 
Um, well, lots of reasons. Uh, number nine, technology, pretty weak. They got QuickBooks and some cheap residential app for their project management when they should really be on a much more robust project management software uh, integrated with accounting and uh, estimating. Number nine, they're real, they don't have a management team. The boss, the owner is the management team. And with that, everybody looks to the manager to make all the decisions. Uh, there's not enough money and there's too much debt. Occasionally people get in over their heads. You can't start a donut store without several hundred grand in the bank. And you gotta have three or four months of overhead just sitting there hoping customers come when you make donuts. Construction, they think, you know, most people think you don't, you don't need to invest to start a construction company. If you wanna grow your business, you have to invest money in it. Uh, number six, there's no loyal customer relationships. So loyal customers are customers to me that give you at least a third of the work without bidding. You negotiate, you sit down, you open your books and you, you agree a price. Uh, loyal customer relationships take time and trust and you're building a friendly relationship. You can't do it by bidding, doing good work. Everybody bids and everybody does good work. You can't build a relationship. You're building, uh, you know, I go to Walmart. I, I get what I want. And if I'm not near Walmart, I go to Target. It doesn't really matter. There's no loyalty there. Number seven, number five, we, we sell low price. And if you continually seek low price to win your projects, you're never going to get to the top of the top of the list on the best in class contractors. You've got to seek better work, more restrictive uh, entry qualifications. You've got to get out of your comfort zone. You've got to get in the sales mode. Number four, you, you really kind of ties in with number five. Most people, most contractors, not any different. They do good work. They, they try to finish on time. They try to make a profit. They're really no different. They're bidding plans and specs. There's no value added by using your company versus the, a company that's $2 cheaper. You're pretty much in the top five in your marketplace. And it doesn't really matter who I use because you're going to perform. Number three, uh, there's always a chance the owner doesn't really understand their numbers. You know, I get guys calling me all the time. They don't even know how to read their p &L statement. They don't understand the difference between cash and accrual and what a whip schedule is. And their foremen don't have a clue what their budget is every job. And uh, they don't know where they are when they're half done. It's, it's a nightmare. No wonder they can't make any money. They don't know where they are. And they have their CPA come in twice a year to help. Number two, uh, owner controls are making all the decisions and you're doing everything for everybody. So the question is, where are you on this? On this, and, and are you the CEO? Are you acting as CEO, Chief Everything Officer? All right. So effective leaders continually change. They have to change. They have to continually do, do business different. Uh, uh, they have to continually improve. You can't stay stuck. Can you imagine you're a football coach and you call the same plays every time with the same players? You know, people don't improve. So what do we have to do? We got to disrupt the status quo and force improvement, right? And so, you know, I went to a CEO conference of uh, Fortune 500 companies uh, uh, last year, and they talked about continually moving the flag to a higher level. So we got to get out of the comfort zone. Comfort is not your goal, as Mario Andretti, the old race car driver, uh, once said. If things aren't going, if if things are under control, I'm not going fast enough. How do I get out of control? I go out on job sites. I got my superintendent. He's got one subcontractor out there. Why aren't there six? Well, you know, it's too confusing. It's too much stress. Yeah, well, it's too much stress when we're too slow. That's what real stress is. So, so what, what do you need to do to change, to improve, disrupt, to boost your business? It's really simple. Just look in the mirror. What do you have to do differently? Whatever you're doing is not making you improve fast enough. And I know some of you on the line here, you know, if I beat you up a few times to try new things. And some of you, it's working. And some of you, it's a struggle. It's hard. And so what's your potential? What's your potential? That's really what I want you to think about. Most people in this business have a great potential. They're not stupid. They're smart. They know how to do things. They know how to get things done. 
but we've got to go out and get some good sales. That's that's top. You can't do anything without great sales. You've got to have great sales. What are you doing to increase sales? Not bid more work, get higher margin sales, customers and projects. And then we run it through the uh, overhead uh, uh, funnel and whatever's left comes out as profit value or growth, you know, a net value of your company or growth, right? <clears throat> but what's happening here, we have a, sh a shutoff valve, a shutoff valve that continually slows us down. So what's your shutoff valve? What's leaking money? What's stopping growth? What's causing you to be stuck? Uh, that's the question here. What's causing you to be stuck? And generally, it's yeah, it's sure. it's the uh, uh, the owner is has the shutoff valve half cut down, half shut, half uh, not moving to the next level. So what are you slowing down? What are you holding back? And so the question is, you know, and you think, what I need help? Well, what do you need help? Are you stuck at the level of what you can do, manage, and control? Your current business is delivering the results that it currently is built to provide. And if it's not providing what you want, what do you have to do to get to go to the next level? That's the key. Working harder is not the answer. Working different is the answer. So some of you have seen me, I've got this uh, shutoff valve uh, scenario. And what do, you, what do I have to do to open my shutoff valve? Uh, I get my business to go to the next level and reach my potential, right? And so uh, uh, am I responsible for too much? Some of you have seen my, uh, you know, my I solve other people's problems uh, discussion. When I solve other people's problems, uh, they bring me more problems. The more problems they bring me, the more problems I solve for them, the more problems they bring me. It's just a vicious cycle. When I let other people bring me their questions and I solve them, they are not blossoming to become the best they can be. You're in control. You're a micromanaging control freak, even though you don't want to admit it. And so people responsible for nothing are responsible for nothing. And so I finally realized the more I do, the less our company will make. My job is to go out and create great customer relationships, win the work, be a visionary leader, and make sure the talent development helps us build the capacity we need so we can get to the next level. That's my main role. Sales, talent, vision, leadership. That's the key. Not doing work. Uh, uh, successful contractors, the owner doesn't do the work. The owner oversees it, leads it, pushes it, controls it, uh, not controls it, but uh, reviews it and holds people accountable. And then spend the other three days a week, sales, talent development, and customer relationships. That's the key. But when I'm doing work, I ain't doing what I'm supposed to do, right? And so. When I do it all myself, what happens? What happens? Nothing. What doesn't happen? That's me in my old control freak mode about 20 years ago. I've got everything going on my desk and everybody's walking in all day. And so what I have to do is let go. Let go to grow. I, I, I had a stamp made. Please handle this and don't tell me what you did. Ah, I got to make a decision, right? Scary. So I got to get off the field. <laughs> stop doing the work and make it happen. I got to delegate and transfer ownership to the people who work for me. And when, when they get overloaded, then I have to hire, or develop and train more people so we can continue the growth. And so leading a valuable company, there's uh, Pete Carroll again with this offensive coordinator who's got the playbook. Notice Pete is gonna about ready to jump on somebody and uh, get slap them on the bank and thank them. That's his role. The other guy on the left, the uh, coach obviously is calling the plays. So that's the key. <clears throat> it's not about control. The more control you have, the less you're going to perform. It's not about doing the work. The more you do, the less you make. So we got to stop thinking that I've got to know everything and control everything. So continuing on, people call me uh, on page three, if you want to roll ahead on the form, on the, on the workbook, help. Okay, so what do we need help with? What do I need to work on? So I created this little business improvement success style cycle picture. And this is uh, this is just a depiction of what really happens. Most companies continue to float along at the same level with the same problems, kind of stuck. And then eventually, sometimes they call and they say, help, 
I'm stuck here. I get guys 50 and 60 years old calling me and say, I've been stuck at the same level with basically no profit, hardly any, hardly enough to pay myself what I'm worth yeah, for 20 years. Hell, what should I do? Well, we got to make a decision to move to the next level. We got to start an improvement program. What do we need to fix? What fires do we need to put out? What do we need to delegate? How many people do you need to hire? What do we need to do to get to the next level? So we start the program and we continue to grow for one month, three months, six months, even eight months. And then, and then the owner typically gets frustrated. Reality sets in. Change is hard. We hit a roadblock. New ideas, disruption, change, implementing systems, holding people accountable. It's hard. I like to say it's hard. I know Ezra's on the phone. He likes me to say that here. And, and then what happens is we continue the vision of growing, but we, we stop. We avoid, we, our improvement slows, we stop and revert back to the old ways because it's easier. And we don't continue that continuous movement to the positive vision of where we want a, our company to work. And so it's human nature. We want to improve. We want to get better. We try some new things. It's like pushing a rope uphill. It's hard. Your people don't want to change. You don't, you don't like to force people to change. You don't want to push too hard. You don't want to continue to be worn out, just stressing out, pushing people to change and hold them accountable. So you just sort of give up. I was thinking this morning before today, I, I was thinking, I've got about six clients who have paid me for a six months worth of coaching uh, sessions. And after, and out of, out of the six I was thinking of, they all disappeared after three months. It's hard to change. And we've got scheduled appointments and then they postpone them or they cancel them. And then I finally talked to them. They said, God, I, I really haven't done anything since our last session. I haven't added any new things or we haven't improved anything. So I just didn't want to call you. Well, why didn't you improve? Well, I was so busy making no money. I didn't have time, you know, and did you hire anybody? No. Did you implement some systems? Yeah, sort of, but not really. I'm not holding. Are you holding meetings? No. Why not? I'm too busy. I'm too busy. Uh, doing the work rather than managing the business. And so, you know, okay, I'll wait for you. I'm here. I'm still here. It, but the ones who continue, unbelievable. I've had clients go from 30 million to 130 million. I've had clients go from, uh, you know, 300 grand profit to a million dollars profit just by continuing the improvement process. That's the key. So what's your solution? You know, I, I'm available to help. I'm not here to sell my services today. I'm just here to help you. But, you know, we can get on some calls. I've got some camps. I've got some workshops. I Whatever you whatever you need, I'm available. So just, you know, and there's other people I could refer you to someone else. Uh, I have a very good coaching friend who does uh, residential home builders. You know, just let me know I'll, I'll, whatever you need. And, uh, and so as we think about it, what's the definition of an entrepreneur? What's the definition of an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is someone who takes financial risk. Now that involves spending money. So usually after we meet one or two times in coaching sessions, I'll say, you need some help, you're overworked. You need systems, you need help, you need financial planning, but you really need some help. You can't improve unless you get some help. So you need to invest in your future. You need to hire, you need to hire. Otherwise you're not gonna grow. You can't do any more yourself. You're already working too many hours. What are you going to do to hire? Who do you need to hire? And it's usually an administrative assistant or, or a really good financial uh, full-charge bookkeeper who really understands construction accounting, or it's a project manager, or it's a field manager, or it's an estimator. Each one of those top three or four positions are going to cost you 75 to 100 grand a year. You have to be willing to invest to get a return. If you're not willing to invest 100,000 to double your profit or to, or to increase your sales 40%, what are, you, what are you doing? Just go get a job as a project manager down the street and make your 100 grand. You know, it, it's like you, you just, you know, you're work, running in circles. What's going on here? You're not getting ahead. So think about what I have to do to grow 
and make more money. That's the key. I can't keep doing what I'm doing and hope it gets better. And now it's even worse with the recession potential. Maybe yes, maybe no. Economy's changing every hour. Well, it depends what you read every day. It's like, oh, I'll just wait. Wait for what? So you have no money? Come on. So anyway, I'm being a little blunt, a little bold, but I want to kick you a little bit and make you think, right? I'm not, I'm not being negative. I'm being positive, I hope. So are you an entrepreneur? Are you willing to do what it takes? You've got to, you've got to, uh, you, you've got to take some risk. You've got to change. What are you going to change? I got to change my customer base. I got to go after new kinds of customers that don't shop bids. I've got to innovate. I've got to get the newest, latest, greatest equipment, software, uh, main, equipment maintenance software, B2W, or one of the really good ones, HCSS. I've got to integrate my estimating with my project management so I don't have all this double, triple entry with QuickBooks and all this. Uh, I've got to have a vision of where I want to go. Uh, I've got to, I got to, I got to move up. I've got to scale. I got to get bigger or better. Better is better than bigger, right? I've got to hire, uh, uh, continue to move to the next level. I got to grow. I got, uh, and if I'm going to grow, I'm going to have to hire and I'm going to have to let go. I'm going to have to focus what I'm supposed to do. Sales, talent development, vision, moving to the next level, holding people accountable to implement systems. And, and then I got to seek higher results, better jobs, better customers. What does it take to get better customers? It takes sales. It takes you getting out of your office and going seeing people and taking the lunch, taking the ball games, do what you got to do to get to the next level. You know, you're dating your customers. You, you're not going to, you're not going to get married unless you get to know them and spend time with them. Right. And so then we have to build a, a team, a management team. So we've got to start hiring for the future. When I hire, I want to hire the best who potentially can help me get to the next level as a senior manager in charge of major parts of my company. And then I've got to get systemized and organized, obviously. And then I got to start an investment program. So eventually I can slow down and have my manager team run the business. And I can start working on passive investment income and development opportunities where I can be the builder and the owner. And lastly, I got to create some space so I can enjoy the benefits. Time off with my family, my friends, uh, uh, my colleagues. Just have fun. Get out of here and do it, right? And uh, that's the key. That's why you're in business. So what do I have to do? I got to think. I'm a builder of businesses, my business. And so to get to the next level, I've got what I call my biz builder steps to success, how to build a business. So first of all, we usually start out as an employee with a vision. And then we move into a, then we become self-employed. And usually the owner does everything or maybe has a couple workers, but basically you're in charge of everything. And then and then we start, we, we get more and more work and we hire some people and I'm still super hands-on. I call it my busy business. I'm stuck. I'm at the stuck zone. Uh, and, and, and when I'm at the stuck zone, most that's where most people stay forever. No life, no money, no future. And uh, the average contractor at 65 has a net worth of about three weeks pay. So what do I have to do to get to the next level with a whole bunch of payments on their equipment, right? And uh, and then and then number four, we gotta we gotta become a business builder. We gotta invest in people, invest in systems, invest in software, seek better customers, uh, start to let go, start to develop a management team, so we become best in class, high margins, high quality, high service, uh, a high win bid hit win ratio. I win more, a lot more than I bid. And of course, then I become, become wealthy and my business works for me. So I don't know where you are on the steps, but the question is, what do I need to do to get to the next level? If you're on level three, uh, what do you need to, who do you need to hire? It's usually hiring. You probably don't have the systems you need, but we got to hire. Well, chicken or the egg? Yes, you got to do both. So we need to hire people, usually a senior PM, a senior estimator, a senior field manager, a, a really strong field superintendents. I can't tell you how many contractors I work with that don't have strong superintendents in the field or foremen. Therefore, the project manager is out in the field basically running the job. Therefore, the company can't grow because we can't afford to do more work. We don't have the team to do more work. So we're stuck doing 5 million and you know net profit of 100 grand. Well, that doesn't even buy you half of a pickup truck anymore. 
and then you got taxes as well. So what do we have to do? What do we have to do to get to the next level? Uh, so, so these are my three key points whenever I work with somebody. Number one, what do I have to do to be successful? Number one, I got to know what I want. What the heck do you want? You have a written vision, a five-year vision, profits, fixed numbers, profits, growth, customer types, how you win work, what your reputation is in the community. Do you know what you want? If you want me to help you with that, I'll be glad to send you my Biz Builder Blueprint Vision and Values Workbook. If you're interested, just send me an email. But what do you want? Once you know what you want, you can get on the train and make it happen, go uphill. And uh, then I can build a plan. If I don't know what I want, I can't draw a plan. So, for example, I, uh, if, if, I want, if I just say I want to grow, okay, okay, let's just bid a bunch of cheap work. That's not what you want. You want to make 6%, 8%, 10%, 3%, whatever it is, net profit on 20 million in sales. That, now I can build a plan to go get it. But if I just say I want more, you'll never get it. That's not even, that's, that's just a dream. So then I can build a plan. You know, an architect gets hired by a, con, a, a developer and, they, and, the, and draw me some plans. Well, what do you want? How big? How much money do you want to spend? What do you want to do? When do you want to move in? You want expansion, all the things, right? Now I can draft a plan. And then, of course, we've got to keep track. It absolutely makes me crazy how many contractors have no clue where they are on their jobs until they're finished and it's too late. How many foremen do you have who have no clue where they are on their jobs? Uh, we don't update our job costs every week or every month. You know, how do I know I'm on track on my schedule if I don't actually have my foreman do a look ahead schedule and review it with them every week? or my senior project manager reviews it with it. You know, I got to know what I'm doing. I got to have a scorecard. I got to have, you know, it'd be like playing football with no scoreboard. It'd be like playing baseball with no batting average. You wouldn't know who to put in first, second, and third on the batting order. I got to have statistics to help me keep track. And and so think about what's your vision? What's your vision? Most Most people's vision is just a blank piece of paper. And what do you want? Why are you in business? The purpose for your business is to give you what you want. What do you want? You've got to have it written down and you've got to have, seek it every day and it's got to be your focus, achieving what you want. So what's your vision? What do you want? And so as, as I look at entrepreneurs and contractors, I write um, articles, as most of, many of you know, every month in Metal Construction News and uh, Masonry Magazine and also Construction Business Owner Magazine. And people call me all the time off the magazine and say, Hey, I need help. I can't get win any work. Well, what are you trying? What's your what do you want? I want to win more work. Well, just lower your price. Okay, thank you very much. No, they don't want to win more work. They want to make more money. They want to maximize productivity. They want to stop bidding. They want to they don't want to win more work. They want to win more of the right kind of work. So we've got to dig in and find out what they want, right? And so I need more help. Well, what kind of help? There's plenty of help. They just don't want to work for you. What can you do to make them want to work for you? What are you doing about training, promotion, uh, team building, uh, company events, employee, uh, 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 just inspiration and motivation and meeting and preparation and helping them get what they want? Uh, I want more customers. No, you don't. You want the right customers. You want uh, you you want some wealth and investments. Yeah. Well, okay. Well. We've got to create some profit to do that. So it's a step-by-step -step process. What do you want? I want my business to give me what I want. What do you want? So I don't know about you, but I want a couple of things. What do you want? Um, I want money. I want money. And, of course, I want happiness. Now, I don't know about you, but more money is happy, happier. Now, I'm not, I'm not uh, greedy. I don't need stupid money. I just need enough money to meet my personal vision and company-wide vision and goals. And that'll allow us to grow, hire great people, build great systems, hire the best software, hire a great controller, financial manager, hire top project managers and supervisors. So I know things are going to go really, really well. And because of that, the money will come, right? And so, so what do I want? I want some freedom. I want this. I don't want to have to be hands-on doing all the work. 
and I want some health, wealth, and happiness, right? What do you want? And it's really just a trade-off, time and money, time and money. You hire a good person, you, you win more time. And then you can decide what to do with your time. You want to spend more time selling or do you want to spend more time, you know, managing work? I don't think so, because that's going to not, that's going to restrict you from growing. So money equals time. So when I decide to hire a better person or the best available that costs 25 grand a year more than the other ones, what am I hope to be getting? I hope to be getting someone to help me build this company and allow me to spend my time where I need to spend my time versus where I have to spend my time because I don't have good people and or I'm not holding them accountable to perform or I'm not providing them a scorecard so they know what results they're where they are on a regular basis or I'm not providing training because I don't have money because I don't have time because you know I'm, it's just a vicious downward cycle so what do I have to do to build a best-in-class business so we start out as a sole proprietor most companies get stuck and only a few get to the next level. What do I have to do to get out of the stuck zone? So I want you to think about what I need to focus on. So I'm gonna just run through a few things. Or just jot down one or two things that you really think would help you get to the next level, to the top of the mountain. So first thing is I gotta have a business plan with, my, with a clear vision, goals, values, strategy. I gotta have a clear, I gotta have a business plan. I can't just keep driving around hoping I get more work and hope it works out in the end. Number two, I got to seek high results, best in class results. So I got to know my money. I got to know my job costs. I got to, you know, I got to really financial management. I can't, I got to have a really good financial manager in my office that runs the money. I've got to really know what growth I'm doing. I got to know my margin fade, margin increase. Uh, and I've got to have accurate estimates, right? I can't be having bad estimates. So I've got to invest in those areas of my company. And then I've got to focus really hard on good customers and good contracts, high margin, loyal customers. Number four, I got to know my numbers. I got to really focus on knowing and focusing on my numbers. Everybody has got to know where they are all the time. Number five, I've got to have strong, enforced, clear, monitored systems with a chain of command, a, a regular meeting schedule where we review results. Review results is the key. And then uh, I've got I've to have a great management team. I can't keep running the company alone. I've got to have a strong team, take charge, accountable and responsible for results. Number seven, I got to have a talent development program in place. Recruit, coach, train, promote, retain, talent. Got to have a great place to work. I've got to make sure we have the best place to work, the best compensation, coaching program, training program, incentive programs. And lastly, I've got to have the leading edge technology, equipment, tools, innovation, all those kinds of things. So I don't know where you are on this list, but uh, think about what do I need to work on first? Usually it's people and customers. Those are the, the gaps. If I just bid all day, I don't need good customers. I just need people want, want another bid. And if I don't focus on people, I don't grow my talent. And I don't attract the best talent. They're working for somebody else. They don't want to work for you. So, you know, I don't know where you need to start. We all need systems. We all need financials. We all need uh, software, all that stuff. But what do you need to focus on first, right? And so if I look at the top Fortune 500 uh, CEOs and chairman of the boards, presidents, COOs, you know, they're in Fortune Fat Magazine, the top uh, most admired companies in America. Every, every year they spit it out. And uh, they focus on one thing. They focus on results. That's the key. Are you focused on results? Are you focused on doing the work, you know, letting people perform and you make sure they stay on track to achieve results? So Fortune 500 uh, presidents and CEOs, they focus on quarterly earnings profit. That's why they make the big bucks, because they maintain the profit margins. They work on their value, their stock price, their net worth of their business. If they want to continually to grow. That's important. And then they, they make sure the company's growing. 
they don't necessarily need to do more construction. They need to add more services, add more value, uh, joint venture with more companies, do something different, more, better to grow uh, and grow their top line or grow their bottom line. I, I don't really care. Just pick one, right? And so most of us contractors spend too much time on the daily bidding and estimating and customer uh, meetings and negotiating change orders and production schedules and equipment schedules and maintenance and crews and the people, you know, I, my guy didn't show up today or whatever, job costs, billings, change orders, you know, managing projects, estimating, whatever it is, where are you? Where do you need to be focused? Uh, not on the day-to-day, -day. you need to fo focus on the big picture. You know, I always say we major in the minors, you need to major in the majors, right? So anyway, think about it. So when you come to a road every day, every day you decide what you're going to do. You're going to go right or left. You're going to go do the work or are you going to manage the people, right? And so just take a look at your results. Uh, the same results are off the road to the right. The good results, the better results are to the left. Which trail are you going to take every day, every every week? Every, you know, it's your choice. Just look at your calendar. What do you spend your time on, right? I love this cartoon. The little teacher, little kid says to the teacher, teacher, you'll find my test results are a pretty good indication of your abilities as a leader. So you as the leader, most of us on the webinar today are leaders. Uh, the results are a reflection of your leadership. It's not your people. You know, it's. You know, what's that? It's not your people, stupid. It's you. What are you doing to get to the next level? And so think about what do you want? I want to hit this number. What do I have to do? And so most companies grow for a few years, and then they continue to do the same thing over and over again, and they get the same results. What do the companies do that continue growth and get to a higher level? What are they doing you're not? You know, what are they doing? What are we doing to improve results on a regular basis? This is what I call the leadership gap the leadership effectiveness gap. And so what do I have to do to get to a higher level? I can continue to just do what I've always done, or I can try new things and do business different. And so when we get to the, to, to, to the decision time, you got to make a decision. You can't postpone the decisions. You can't delay decisions. What do you need to do to get to the next level? It's simple. Make a decision. So I always say, do it or don't. Decide. What are you going to do and what are you going to not do? Well, if I need to grow, I need better people. I need more people. I need to hire more people. I got to be willing to invest. And every decision you make is not going to always have the right solution, not be the right solution. Sometimes you just got to go with it. Go with your gut. Go with your best educated uh, estimate guess of what you think is required. And if it doesn't work, you didn't fail. You're going to, you're going to pivot. You're going to try something new. If you're, if you're a coach and you call the wrong play, you call a different play and you try again, right? You don't give up. You know, I tried sales once and I never got anything. I, I updated my website five years ago and it didn't work. Well, duh, you didn't continually upgrade it. And so what do I have to do? you got two choices. Yes or no. There's no more maybes. You know, it's a green light or a red light. There's no yellows. You, you don't move when it's yellow. You, you stop. And so what we're going to do, you're going to say no. You're going to say, oh, I'm going to try. I get this. What are you going to work on? Well, I'm going to try to do that. No, try means never. When you say I'm going to try to find new customers, you're not going to do it. When you say yes, I'm going to go out and spend two days a week doing what I have to do to get new, better customers. I'm going to spend one day a week making sure we never have profit fade ever again. i got to get the estimates fixed, and i got to get the field production fixed. I'm not going to do the work. I'm going to oversee and manage the improvement program. That's the key here. Stop saying never, which means try, maybe, oh, see what I, I don't know, maybe. That's just so wimpy to me. So let's, let's get off that. So what I have to do is continue to scale up, look to the future, look for a, a, a moving to a higher level, a better level, a more, more better result level. Uh, I got to continue. One of the things I love when I went to that CEO conference was CEOs were talking about my job is to build capacity, which is talent, right? 
in systems? What do I have to do to continually build capacity? What do I have to do to hire, hire and let go? And what do I have to do to improve? That's really the focus here. So I'll close out with my blueprint. Let's walk through that. I want you to think about what I have to work on to get to the next level. You know, uh, there's 30, 40 people on the, on the webinar here right now. And uh, everybody's different. Everybody has a different need. When I meet with clients one-on-one, -on -one, we get on our first call, we lay out all the problems and all the issues. They're always different, but generally they're always the same. It's people, it's numbers, it's not holding people accountable. It's, 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 it's waiting for the phone to ring as your marketing plan. That's generally what the problem is. We're not willing to do what we need to do to get to the next level. And so what happens is we grow, we have a vision when we start a company. We have a vision where we want to be. And then eventually we grow along <laughs> three or four or five years. And then we get stuck at a level that becomes unbearable or uncomfortable. And that's when I get the call, help, George. And so what do I have to do to get to the next level? So what, this is what I don't really enjoy talking about is companies get to a what I call a growth barrier. Something stops them from growing. And we kind of alluded to it earlier. It's hard to continue to improve. It's hard to continue to, to force people to hold them accountable, to motivate them to want to get to the next level. It becomes a, a burden. And so you just say, oh, well, I'll just stay here and hope it gets better. That's not acceptable. And so what do I have to do to get to the next level? And so we, what causes that growth barrier? What causes that growth barrier? What do you think causes it? And so if we had uh, more time, we could do a little workshop on that. But really, to me, it's all about fear. It's, about, it's all about avoiding pain, avoiding being uncomfortable. We're afraid to make decisions. We're afraid to take risks because it might not work. Well, nothing's guaranteed. This is construction. How do you know if your subcontractors are even going to show up? There's no firm answer. You're not making widgets. You're making a custom building out in the field uh, or a custom road. It, you don't know if anything's good's going to happen. It could rain tomorrow. The inspector won't show up. The concrete trucks break down. You don't know. So what are you afraid of? This is the risk factor. Got to be willing to make decisions, take risk, and endure some pain. Uh, that's the problem. And if you hire somebody, there's a chance they're not going to work out. Oh, well, we tried. Let's do it again. Let's continue to seek better people until we get what we need, right? And well, what if we lose money? Well, what if you don't? Look at the good, look at the bad. Second, second reason, which these are all fear. We don't hire. We, we, we decide not to hire. We slow down hiring. We hire cheap and hope they grow. Well, by the time by the time they grow, five years from now, you're still at the same level. When you hire an inexperienced cheap person. You get somebody who's your puppy dog and you got to run them around and feed them and hold them and, you know, do everything you got to do, train them. And you don't have time to do your job. You're worried about your cheap employee, keeping them busy. So we don't hire. We don't delegate. We don't let go. We don't trust. Trust. Uh, we don't have a talent development plan and we don't build a team. So that's really a big fear. And number three, we, we're afraid to go sell because we might get told no. So we don't do any marketing or sales. The average contractor's marketing plan is wait for phone to ring. Do good job, hope they call. Well, what are you doing to be proactive about building a great customer base who hires you on an ongoing, regular basis? What are you doing about getting out of the low bid work into high margin work where you can negotiate or you're one of the few qualified, specified people that can do that kind of work. So, and lastly, we don't have a written business plan. We're just floating along, hoping we get down the right river, hoping we take the right turn on the road. We don't have any targets, goals, job descriptions, regular meetings, org chart. We don't track our money. So, so why not? It's hard. It's hard to hold people accountable. It's hard to enforce systems. It's hard to follow the chain of command. It's hard to have a regular meeting schedule because something good or bad might come up and I need that time to go put out another fire. 
So what do I have to do? So let's build a company now. Let's let's build what I call a business builder blueprint. So first of all, we got to realize there's a growth barrier. What's holding you back? And what happens is when we're we're focused on the do, we're stuck. And when you put yourself basically in most of the positions and don't really delegate, you're the do man or the do woman. And uh, we, we've got to be willing to take some risks. So in order to achieve our goal, our vision, continuous positive high margin growth, we've got to take some risks. So we've got to build an org chart with great people. We've got to, uh, we've got to, we've got, the ultimate goal is to get from the do to the get. Do work, get work, grow company. I can't grow unless I'm organized and systemized with a strong team. So it's kind of the chicken or egg again. You know, I got to get a little work so I can grow my business. But in the meantime, I better get organized and systemized or I'm not going to make any money. So over here on the right side of the growth barrier, I got to have a plan, a blueprint, a business plan. Next thing I have to have is structure. I've got to have a, a, a clear org chart with chain of command and levels of authority and job descriptions. Everybody got to know what they're accountable to perform and results they're responsible to achieve. And I and, and I eventually I got to build a management team. And uh, in order for me to delegate and let go and get over to the get work side, I've got to continually move forward on the right side of standardize my meeting schedule, you know, estimating meeting every Monday, project manager meeting, meet with every project manager every week, meet with my foreman once every week or two. I got to have those regular meetings, meet with my finance, my, my controller once a week. Those are standard. Uh, and then I've got to have systems. And these are in no order. They just all got to happen. I've got to have organized system I'm enforced, keyword enforced systems with people accountable to perform them. Uh, and then uh, I've got to have scorecards. People got to know where they are. And of course, what we're doing today, uh, we're, we're working on our personal development. So eventually I can build wealth. But we got to get the right side of the growth barrier relatively organized. I don't know what you need to work on first. Usually it's hiring systems, talent. That's usually the first. If you don't know your numbers, you better get that figured out. And then, of course, we want to get over and start getting more work. Generally, the owner of a company is the number one salesperson in the company. Estimators don't sell. Estimators price. Salesman job is generally to develop leads and opportunities for the owner and the team to go win the work. That's generally how it works. And when we try to hire people that are in the wrong boxes to do the wrong the, the wrong box, another box, it never works. So what do I got to do? I got to I got to as the owner of my company, I've got to focus on growth. I've got to uh, I've got to have a sales estimating marketing business development plan that attracts customers on great projects. And I've got to have uh, uh, the right customer targets that I'm going to attack. I got to have a customer target tracking attack plan. And lastly, I've got to have a, a way to differentiate my company from my competition. So I don't get uh, perceived as another contractor. I call them commodity contractors. They do cheap work, plans and specs with no differentiating factor. They got on a school job site list and they bid it. And if they're low, they get it. And if they don't, if, if they're not low, they don't get it. No matter how good they are, they don't get it. They don't even get invited to the table for an interview because there's no differentiating factor on a low bid plans and spec job. So what I have to do to get my company to grow and get to the next level, that's what I want to challenge you with. So you got some choices here. You can continue to be the complaint part of a department doing everything yourself, uh, trying to balance life and business, uh, burn the candle at both ends, um, keep spinning the plates, putting out fires, or you can make a decision to, to do something. You can decide to do nothing, just continue to go back and do it all yourself. Number two, you can just hope it changes, sit and wait. Maybe something good will happen. Or maybe the economy. I mean, I'm not sure. Wait for that one. And number three, you got to decide to do something different. What are you going to do different? You know, you've invested an hour or so here today. What are you going to do different to get to the next level, to improve your company, to improve your bottom line, your margins, your customer base, all the things you have to do, your talent program. Uh, and we got to have a plan. 
So I want to encourage you to think about your plan. What is your plan? So just, just for an example, let's look at our org chart uh, just real quick and then we'll get out of here. We got to have the right people in the right positions, not cheap people, the right people with the right talent and the right attitude. We can't tolerate poor attitudes, non-team players. I don't care how good they are. They don't, you're not going to win a game if you got bad attitudes uh, for the current needs and the key future needs. So we got to hire for the future. We need to hire people that'll take us to the next level and allow us to grow, go where we want to go. And so here's an org chart. I'm going to skip this slide real quick. All right. So, so, so if we build an org chart, we've got to have a real click picture. And eventually I want to have four key people running my business. It could be five if you add the field manager, but we've got to have somebody purely devoted to winning great work. And that's usually the owner. Then we've got to have a really strong estimating department that never misses anything and is accurate on labor production rates. Then we've got to have somebody who really be strong running the construction operations and business. And we might want to split that into project, manage, uh, project management and supervision and then field management. So it depends on how you do business. And lastly, we need to have a real strong support team, strong accounting manager, and a strong office manager. <clears throat> that will allow us, allow us to grow. And then eventually, we want to have them develop into a management team that runs the business, produces results, gets the jobs finished on time and on budget. So that's what we're trying to accomplish here. And uh, so do you have player job descriptions? You know, how do I be a good supervisor if I don't know what's required? Uh, accountabilities, responsibilities, chain of command, levels of authority. I've got to have all those things clearly organized in order to make, make it to the next level. The other thing I have to do is have a good sales, sales program. You know, what are my choices to win more work at higher margins, which is why we're here today. i got to win more work at higher margins. Well, I can bid more jobs. No, that didn't help. I can lower my job costs. Well, most of us have our job costs pretty pretty darn tight. You know, we can always improve our productivity a little bit with scorecards and some other things. And, of course, we can lower our markup. That's not going to help. And lastly, what are we going to do, right? We've got to have better people, add more value, better service, better customer relationships, and or seek uh, profitable sales. So, Profitable sales are in the niches, are in the difficult entry qualification types of customers and projects. That's what I that's what I want you to think about. What are you doing about achieving entry into high barrier to entry customers? Those are customers that have strict qualifications. You know, people say, I don't want to do Army Corps work. Why? All the paperwork. High paperwork eliminates competition and increases profitability. The clients that I have that are in the military construction make the most money of all my clients. Why? Because nobody wants to go compete in that marketplace. Once you're in it, you learn it and you make a lot more money, double the profit of a commodity contractor doing interior office suites, building shopping centers, building Kmarts and Walmarts. Well, Kmarts are long gone. But, uh, you know, what are you doing to, to increase your profitable sales? negotiating work, design, build, all those kinds of things. Or, or you can uh, continue to wait for the phone to ring and hope it gets better. That's not going to work. All right. So, so closing out, uh, I just want to have you think about a um, couple things here, uh, and then we'll uh, take some questions, okay? So, so what's your priority? What are we going to do when we get home? when we get back to the office, when we get wherever we're going today. Uh, so these are some of my best clients, and they're all really successful guys. Uh, some of them I started at 30 million, now they're doing 150 million. Some of them are 10 million, now they're doing 60 million. Uh, one, one of them in the group here was doing um, 90 million, now they're doing 140. And, and these are my bigger clients, but these are successful people who run very successful businesses. Not it's the same philosophy whether you've got 
four guys or 400 guys? It's the same thoughts. What do I have to do to improve my business? So to pick your poison, get your business plan in place. Number two, lead and manage your business. Number three, get your vision and values cleared up. Number four, get your financials cleared up, organized. Uh, number five, get a sales and marketing customer development program in place. Number six, get your accounting job cost all integrated, accurate. Enforce your systems and hold regular meetings. Number eight, update your org chart, job descriptions. Nine, hold people accountable, let go, delegate. Number 10, get your field and project management system standardized and perfected. Number 11, Build your talent, talent development program. Number 12, start working on building a management team. And number 13, start an investment program, investment development program. Okay, so what's your action plan? What are you going to start doing? What are you going to stop doing? That's what I want you to think about as we leave our program today. What do I have to do to get to the next level? All right, so, so when I first meet with clients, this is kind of where we start. We usually start with uh, money. You need to invest time and money in order to improve. You're going to invest time, and you're going to get the people together in your company, and you're going to hire money, and you're going to build a better company. So without that, you're not going to do anything. So what are you willing to invest? Take a risk. You're going to hire a coach, consultant. Uh, you're going to uh, whatever you got to do, right? Then we're gonna fix some issues. We're gonna put out the fires. Number three, you're gonna draft, we're gonna draft your blueprint, your vision, your values, your, your strategies, your mission. And then we're gonna work on your markup and profit improvement plan. We're gonna develop a step-by-step -step program to charge more or charge less, depending on the job size, job type, customer type, so that we can eventually make money at the end of the year. And we're going to work on our systems. What systems do we need in place that'll help you get to the next level? Number six, we're going to work on the org chart. Now, it's, a lot of times we move six up to like number three. We've got to get your org chart squared away so everybody's clear on what they need to do to get to the next level. And number seven, uh, we've got to figure out how to win higher margin projects. What kind of projects should you be doing that you aren't doing or could you be doing? Number eight, That'll increase our net profits. And then, of course, we need to change your role as the owner manager from doer to visionary leader. Okay. And then, of course, we can start our wealth program. All right. So, thanks for being here today. I want you to grow. I want you to start small, uh, commit to grow, start small and grow. I want you to not, uh, I want you to do business different. I want you to. Stop sitting on the bench, do nothing. I want you to stop treading water. I want you to stop feeling boxed in. I want you to stop feeling like you're burnt toast. I want you to stop being busy and broke. And I want you to get, stop, get stuck in a rut, doing what you've always done, hoping for different results. So you got some tough decisions. The decisions are yours, yes or no. What am I gonna do? You're gonna do to get your business to grow.